This is my introduction to chickens and why I think they are the gateway animal to homesteading. If you're interested in producing your own food or you just have a little bit of land and you want to do something with it, this is why I think you should consider chickens as your first choice of animal to add. I will be discussing both the benefits and the drawbacks of chickens. I will also go through different ways of housing chickens and the necessary equipment that you will need to get before acquiring chickens. So if your goal is to become more self-sufficient or just to eat better, you might want to consider the chicken. I have kept chickens almost my entire life. I have housed them in many different ways. I will begin by going over the benefits of adding chickens to your life. One of the reasons many people start keeping chickens is because everybody eats eggs in one form or another. An obvious benefit of keeping chickens is good quality, fresh eggs for you and your family. A home-raised, fresh chicken egg is superior in every way to the factory farm alternative. Once you find out this difference, you'll never be able to buy commercial eggs again. In addition to eggs, fresh meat is another reason to keep chickens. Almost all the chicken meat sold in the United States is from one breed of chicken, the Cornish Cross. While you can raise this breed yourself, raising your own chickens opens up a lot more variety. You can also make money keeping chickens. You can sell the eggs that they produce. You could incubate those eggs and hatch out chicks. You could even sell the fertile eggs to others to incubate. The chicks that you hatch out can either be sold when they're young or you can raise them up and sell them later, either as adult chickens or as meat. Other good benefits of keeping your own chickens include a disposing of food scraps that otherwise might go to waste, using the chickens to produce fertilizer, and even using the chickens to do work like killing weeds and turning compost piles. I'm sure there's some inventive uses of chickens that I haven't even mentioned. Compared to a lot of other livestock, the investment you will need to acquire chickens and the equipment to keep them is less. Chickens are inexpensive and easy to acquire just about everywhere. The same can be said for chicken feed. Another great aspect about chickens is a lot of towns will allow you to keep chickens, but probably not a cow. The amount of land needed to keep chickens and the housing is small. So even if you live in town, you probably have enough room. Also, if you remove the rooster from the mix, hens don't make very much noise, so you can keep them on the down low. I am sure you're aware of at least some of these benefits of chickens or you wouldn't be watching the video. So let me go into what is needed before you get your chickens. The care and housing of chickens is pretty straightforward. One of the most important things to consider before getting your chickens is the predator presence in your area. Humans are not the only critter that enjoys a chicken dinner. In every area I have lived, dogs have caused me the most problems when it comes to chickens. Dogs, however, are a double-edged sword. I have found them one of the best things to keep my chickens safe. If you properly train your dog, it is one of the best deterrents to any other predator in the area. Rare is the animal that does not enjoy a chicken dinner. Not only do you have to worry about dogs, you got possums, raccoons, coyotes, foxes, owls, snakes, mink, even hawks. I have had personal experience with every one of these critters trying to prey on my chickens. So the primary reason to have housing for chickens is to keep them safe, especially at night. A chicken is a setting duck at night when it's asleep. The most common way to keep chickens on a small farm is a coop and run, which is basically an open yard area that is fenced in and a small shed where they go at night and also where you keep their nest boxes. Of course, you can get a lot more elaborate. You can make a coop and run with multiple yards and you rotate which yard you're using. You can use the yard you're not using as a garden or just let it regrow after the chickens have uh, destroyed all the vegetation. Another more preferable way to keep chickens in my opinion is a chicken tractor, which is basically a coop and run that is smaller and can be moved or drug around your yard. Most chicken tractors are made from wood. You can also use metal or PVC. In my experience, I prefer PVC. It's lightweight, easy to move, and easy to work with. 
If you happen to live in a rare area without any predator pressure, you can even keep your chickens free range. For example, in a lot of areas in Africa, there are very few predators. There, the chickens can run free. Even in the cities, you'll see the chickens running free. They'll either roost up by the house or in trees at night. This, of course, would not fly in U.S. cities. So depending on where you live, your housing could be as simple as a small shed where you close your chickens up at night. In order to properly house your chickens, you have to consider all the variables in your area and how you would like to keep your chickens. Aside from predator protection, however, the housing can provide additional benefits. Chickens can be quite destructive, especially to gardens and uh, any kind of plantings you might have. I often let my chickens free range during the day. But if you have flower beds or a vegetable garden, you might want to keep an eye on those chickens. Now that I've done a quick overview of housing, let's go over some other things that you want to include for your chickens. At night, chickens like to roost, so somewhere in the coop you need to include a place for them to do that. Usually, the higher the roost is, the more desirable it is to the chickens. Be mindful of its location. You don't want the chickens to be able to have their butts hanging over their water, their food, or their nesting boxes. You will also want the roost to be higher than the nest boxes. That way it'll encourage the chickens to be on the roost and not sleeping in the nest boxes. It doesn't always work, but it does help. You can make a roost from just about anything, from a board to a length of PVC pipe to a thick stick. Now let's take a look at nest boxes. As is the case in a lot of the chicken world, you can usually make a better nest box than is available commercially. I prefer to use plastic buckets that I cut in half. The open end is covered by the door accessing the nest boxes. You can open this door from the outside, allowing you easy access to the eggs. This way you don't have to enter the coop. You disturb your chickens less and it's easier for you as well. The plastic buckets are easy to clean and they're relatively durable. This design can be used on a coop and run that's stationary or a chicken tractor. I fill the nest boxes with hay because it's readily available on my farm. You can use any similar material from dried grass to straw to shavings. When your chickens start laying, I recommend you collect your eggs at least once a day, preferably twice a day. The average chicken will start laying eggs when it's six months old. A hen will start laying eggs with or without the presence of a rooster. Of course, if you want to incubate those eggs, you're going to need a rooster. Almost all eggs sold in the United States are not fertilized. Even if you incubate them, they're not going to develop a chick. You can eat both fertilized and unfertilized eggs. You do not have to refrigerate fresh eggs, but you do not want to take commercial eggs that have been refrigerated and have them set out. If you're not refrigerating your eggs, you probably want to consume them within two weeks. You will want to store your eggs in a cool, dark area. There are many ways to preserve eggs, but that is beyond the scope of this video. When you construct your coop, you want to make sure there's enough roost area for every chicken that you have. You do not need a nest box for every hen. I recommend about one nest box for each five hens. I recommend having a window on your coop. That way your chickens get up early and are more productive. During winter, when you have short days, your hens will often stop laying eggs. You can keep your egg production up by using artificial light. I have just always let my hens have a break during winter. Some other things to keep in mind about your coop design, that if your area has a cold winter, the coop's purpose is to protect the chickens during that time. If you live in a warm area, however, you don't have to worry about this. Your coop doesn't even need to be enclosed. Heating your coop, however, is usually a bad idea. It is better to pick a chicken breed that is adapted to your climate. If you are in a cold climate, it's important to have your coop sealed, but you do want some ventilation. You do not want moisture building up in there. The main purpose is to prevent drafts. A couple more points to keep in mind. Chickens do not like to walk in the snow, so if your run has snow on it, they're going to stay in the coop. Any temperature in the upper 90s and you'll need to provide some shade for your chickens. 
Your coop only needs to be big enough for all your chickens to have a roost area and to put nest boxes and anything else you need in there. For the run, you need a minimum of two square foot for each bird. The larger you make your run, however, the happier your chickens will be. Also keep in mind that if you have a small run, there's not gonna be anything growing in there. The chickens will destroy everything. Now that we have discussed housing, let's move on to food and water. There are many different commercial products to provide water to your chickens, but I really feel the best way is the chicken water nipples. They keep the water clean. You can install the chicken water nipples on the bottom of a bucket and call it good, or you can get more advanced and have that bucket filled automatically using a float valve. You could also use PVC pipe as your reservoir instead of a bucket. Or if you want to be really simple, you can just use a bowl for water. Going that route, however, will require more maintenance to keep clean water available. In addition to water, you're gonna to have to feed your chickens, of course. Most areas have several brands of chicken feed available. Chickens would also love to have any table scraps you give to them. And if you allow your chickens to run free range, they will find a lot of the food themselves. This is also the case if you keep them in a chicken tractor and move it frequently. I always keep feed available to my chickens, however, even if they are running free. Chicken feed comes in both crumbles and pelletized form. I get crumbles at the local co-op. For feeding the chickens, you can go as simple as a bowl, and there's also many commercial feed hoppers available, or you can make your own or use PVC pipe to build a feed silo. If you have cold winters, one of the most challenging aspects on keeping chickens is providing water in freezing weather. There are some commercial products available to help this. There's heated stands for your waterer, and there's also heated water bowls for cats or dogs that can be used for chickens. Or if you use rubber bowls like I do, you can just break the ice out every day. I have also used some more elaborate methods to keep water available in freezing weather. So this will bring up the question of what temperature are chickens comfortable in? Well, when it comes to cold weather, the chickens I have kept seem to be fine on anything above 20 degrees. If you have chickens with big combs, if you go down into the teens and lower, they're gonna likely suffer frostbite on those combs. There will be some variables in this, of course. The design of your coop and its location will come into play. When it comes to hot weather, my chickens have suffered when it gets in the upper 90s or beyond. If they don't have an area to escape the heat, you can lose your chickens. Now that we have discussed housing, feeding, and watering your future chickens, let's go into acquiring stock. There are many ways you can acquire your chickens. You can buy adult chickens that are already laying. You can get those at small animal auctions, and sometimes people even give them away for free. You can find them on various platforms like Facebook and Craigslist. But most people start with chicks. One of the advantages of starting with chicks is that they will get used to your routine and grow up with it. If you happen to have an interest in a rare breed, often you have to start with fertilized eggs and incubate them. One of the best places to find eggs to hatch is eBay. Other places are groups and forums dedicated to chickens. Most people that start with chicks get them from a farm store nearby. But there are also a lot of companies that you can mail order chicks through. Your own particular desires might lead you towards one breed, but I also think you should consider climate when picking what type of chicken you're gonna raise. If you have cold winters in your area, you should pick a chicken with a pea comb. You don't want a chicken with a big comb that can get frostbite. When you're picking what breed to raise, you also need to decide what your primary purpose of keeping chickens is, if that is egg production or meat production, and that will tell you which breed would be more suited to you. If your desire is to sell hatching eggs, you want to go with a breed that sells well and is in demand. In the future, I plan to do a video on the incubation of eggs, so currently I will not delve into that topic much. But I am going to go over the proper care of chicks. As soon as your chicks hatch or as soon as you get your chicks home, you want to be providing them with food and water. Chicks that have just hatched don't actually need food and water immediately, but I say why wait? There are many different ways to feed and water your chicks. While they're young, the method I prefer is they make metal and plastic bases that screw onto mason jars, and that's how I provide my food and water. You will want to keep clean food and water available to your chicks at all times. Until your chicks are fully feathered, you want to keep them inside in a draft-free environment. 
Chicks can produce some dust, but in order to keep them safe, I usually keep them inside the house. For housing your chicks, you can go as simple as a cardboard box, but what I have found that works really well are the mineral tubs. These are plastic tubs that mineral comes in for cattle. They are readily available in most farm areas. Another thing that works well is plastic storage totes. The most important thing is to keep the chicks safe from predators and in an area that you can keep warm and have the climate controlled. I usually use pine shavings for bedding in the chicks housing and you need to change it anytime it is getting heavily soiled. You can also use sawdust, clean dirt, sand, just about anything for bedding. The best bedding materials are absorbent and don't harm the chicks. When your chicks get older, they will be more active. This activity often throws bedding into your waterer. That's why I like to place the water up on a brick. It keeps it from getting full of the bedding. The most common way to keep your chicks comfortable temperature wise is to use a heat lamp. 99 and a half degrees is your incubation temperature. So that's what temperature you want your house for the chicks to be when they first get out of the incubator. You can control the temperature for the chicks by how far off the ground the heat lamp is and by the size of the bulb that the heat lamp is using. If all your chicks are huddled under the heat lamp, then it's not warm enough for them. If on the opposite hand, all your chicks are spread out away from the heat lamp, it's too warm for them. If you look at the picture, you'll see what is close to ideal with some of the chicks under the lamp and some on the outer perimeter. As your chicks become feathered, you're going to be reducing your temperature until the chicks do not have a heat lamp. As your chicks mature, they will start getting more and more adult feathers. Eventually, they're going to look like a miniature version of an adult chicken at which time you should not be providing any additional heat for them and they should be ready to go outside. At the end here, I think it's appropriate that I go over some of the drawbacks of having chickens. Probably the biggest drawback is that you're always gonna have to take care of them. If you wanna go on vacation or leave for an extended time, you're gonna need someone to take care of them. This will remove some of your freedom. Your chickens depend on you. Another drawback is that chickens do make noise. While hens don't make very much noise, if you have roosters in the mix, they can get quite noisy at times. Another drawback is that you need enough space for your chickens. While that space may be minimal if you only have a few, you do need to make sure that you have enough room for all the chickens once they're fully mature. Another thing to consider is that dogs and chickens don't always get along. If you do not have well-trained dogs, they're always going to be at odds with the chickens and they can actually kill the chickens. Cats can also be dangerous to chickens, especially when the chickens are young. While you can set up systems that will reduce your workload, you're likely going to be taking care of your chickens every day, especially if you have eggs to collect. While eventually, if you manage your chickens properly, they can be self-supporting and even make you some money. At the outset, you're going to have to expect that they're not going to be profitable. Also, as mentioned, your chickens are likely going to need daily care, and this is going to need to be done regardless of the weather. It'll be hot, it'll be cold, it doesn't matter. Those chickens will be depending on you. Well, thanks for watching my video. This was just a short introduction to chickens where I cover most of the things that you would need to know. I'll go in more in depth about a lot of these subjects, so you might check my additional videos. If you have enjoyed my video or found it helpful, I would appreciate the use of my affiliate links in the comments. I'll be linking to the chicken water nipples and the links will help even if you don't buy that product. I also have affiliate links on my website and these links give me a small kickback anytime someone purchases something through them and it helps me uh, support my business.